Good evening, I'm Connor McEntee. And I'm William Crane. We thank you for tuning in. Kellyanne Conway and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez exchanged words on Twitter over the Easter terrorist attacks in Sri Lanka. Conway questioned Cortez on why she did not mention the attack on Twitter. Cortez rebutted asking Conway if she was implying that she was less of a Christian for not saying something immediately. Cortez ended the Twitter debate by acknowledging the horrifying attack and that Conway, and as a country, should do more to welcome immigrants fleeing religious persecution. While Conway tried to turn the conversation into a rejection of Cortez's ideas of the Green New Deal and socialized medicine. The Peoria Zoo, located in Glen Oak Park, has been a place where families can learn about animals and enjoy themselves. Here's Connor McEntee with more. The Peoria Zoo is known as a family-friendly place, but there is more to its history than one may think. The zoo dates back to the 1800s, when a herd of elk was donated to the Peoria Park District. It came to a point where they just had to decide uh, if they close it down, uh, if they put money into it. There was uh, talk about moving it out uh, closer to Wildlife Prairie or putting those two together, and the overwhelming decision by the public was keep it where it is. Currently, the zoo is a hot place for family fun and educational animal entertainment. Well, I actually work with a little of everything, but uh, my expertise is in reptiles. I just had an interest since I was a small child, and uh, that's kind of how I got involved working at the zoo. I'm really big in education, especially when it comes to like, uh, like large snakes. People are very fearful of large snakes. Uh, to tell people that there aren't venomous snakes in central Illinois is very important. The zoo is much more than just a place of work. For some, it is a devotion to animal improvement. We are here on holidays. We are here in the middle of night if we have to be. You know, if a giraffe is being born at 2 a.m., you come over here. Uh, and it, it is a privilege to be a part of these animals' lives. So I can't see myself doing anything else. The zoo is open daily from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., holding special events and programs in animal education. In the zoo's mission statement, they're devoted to conservation. Reporting for VU TV News, I'm Connor McEntee. Groundbreaking director John Singleton has died at the age of 51. According to the New York Times, Singleton had a long history of hypertension, leading to a stroke on April 17th and hospitalization. Several celebrities took to Twitter to express their loss. The St. Louis Cardinals took on the Washington Nationals last night. Dakota Hudson was on the mound for the Cardinals and had a solid performance, only allowing three runs and seven hits over the course of his five innings. The Reds struck first, but boy, did the Cardinals strike back. Marcel Ozuna belted one into left center field in the bottom of the third, giving them the momentum needed to take the game. The Cardinals go on to win 6-3. I'm William Crane. And I'm Connor McEntee. Thank you for tuning in, and have a great night. Good evening. I'm Connor McEntee, and welcome to BUTV One-on-One. -on -One. I'm here with my guest, Dr. Robert Prescott, the Associate Dean of Liberal Arts and Sciences at Bradley, to discuss his career and improvements he has made at Bradley. Dr. Prescott, welcome. Thanks, Connor. Uh, my first question for you is, how has your book, Why to Major in English If You're Not Going to Teach, uh, benefited Bradley and its mission? Well, it really grew out of Bradley and its mission. Uh, I came here in 91, and I came as a traditional kind of English professor. It's like, come to me as a fountain of knowledge, and I will teach you to think deep thoughts and express your deep thoughts in writing and in spoken English. And it was, the focus was very much on English literary scholarship. And then I met the folks in the Career Center who asked me, what are you giving the students that launch their careers? What does an English major do next? And I started to think about that and work with the Career Center and discovered that what we were giving our students was an executive skill set. The thing that all employers are looking for, but no one can train for. They need people who can think creatively about complex problems who can persuade people to share a vision, who have the empathy necessary to match the message to the audience. You know, because you're writing, you're not a good writer because of universal rules of good writing. You're a good writer because you can adjust your language to an audience in a given situation. And so my book kind of put together a, a way of thinking about the English experience and, and the skills that my discipline gives anybody, which is like the writing one course and the writing two course, Everyone needs to be able to persuade. Everybody needs to be able to communicate a message and to do it appropriately. Not to talk over the heads of the audience or beneath their <laughs> dignity, but to meet them where they are and give them what they need. 
And so we used the book for our senior project. And our seniors in English now, instead of just writing one more paper like their professors, they use all their skills to research what they want to do next. What are the passions that you have? What do you want to do next? And how can we in the English department help you get there? And we connect them with, their, with alumni who have pursued their dreams, with local employers. We, we create new internship paths for them. And we have incredible job placement for our English majors. And then growing, for me, growing in this way as an academician put me in a position to be a better teacher of writing in the gen ed program, in Western Civ, and with all, all of the different uh, students that I serve in my capacity. My next question for you is, sure. what is it about Bradley that you just love ever since you've come here? <laughs> like I said, I've been here since 91. Both of my kids are Bradley graduates and are passionate about Bradley. What I love the most is our commitment to the student. There's not a colleague I have on campus who's here just about themselves or about their research. All of them mentor students, have relationships with alumni that were cultivated in a freshman class. It's, it's you, you probably know, we're rated in a fraction of the top 1% in experiential learning. And it's in helping students with individual research in their disciplines. It's guiding students in workplace situations that we do so well. And there, you get to know students as people, not just as some kid sitting at a desk. It's a person who has a future. And I've learned by being at Bradley to look at my students and see their futures in front of them. I don't teach just to the here and now. I know the practical value of everything that we're doing. And students respond so well to that. It's why I have so many on speed dial. I dance at Bradley weddings. <laughs> it's a common experience. <laughs> So, you know, a, a frank and simple answer, what do I love most about Bradley, is the quality of the student body. Well, that is all the time that we have. I want to thank you again, Dr. P, for being here today. It's my pleasure. And thank you for watching. Have a good night.